I've talked a little bit about stack unwinding and I just want to show in detail a little bit more how stack unwinding works. Um, basically when you when a function returns or when a scope completes everything defined in that scope uh, is destroyed and if that thing, if it's a complex type uh, then the destructors execute if the destructors are present. So here I have a, a car and I have a constructor and a deconstructor with both trace statements. So if I define a car just like this and run it, you see here that the constructor executed and then the uh, deconstructor executed. Now let me change this example up a little bit and say car1 and then I'm going to define a new scope and sometimes this is a handy trick but generally you're doing this within the context of a for loop or a while loop or some other kind of control structure anyway car car 2 and then down here let's uh, define car 3 <clears throat> now pause the video here and think about what 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 will the output be that'd be a, a good exercise to do so pause Okay, you're back. Now that you have, <laughs> that sounds a lot like a kid's show, doesn't it? A kid's show say, hey, okay, say hey, and then you, the kids are supposed to say hey, and obviously I have kids, so I'm talking about kids' shows. All right, so, so we have three cars, so let's execute this. All right, notice that we have two constructors, a destructor, another constructor, and two destructors. So I'll, let me just tell you, well first of all try to figure out which constructors and destructors belong to which instances here. Um, so here we have the this first constructor it belongs to this one, this first car. The next constructor executes for car 2. And that's this trace statement here. But notice this scope here it completes right here. So then car 2's destructor executes. But then we have another car defined here so then its constructor executes. And then we have two destructors execute, which is are the destructors for the first car and the third car because they are defined within the same scope. So one of my early C++ classes, uh, there was a question on there saying, um, make a type that counts how many instances of it exist. And I remember doing very poorly on this and thinking I'm so awesome at C++. And really it's a rudimentary question um, and, and I bombed it. So it, it, it gave me some humble pie. But in this case, it'd be useful to use that same trick of having the car type count and identify all the instances that have been created of itself in order to be able to identify which destructor belongs to which car? Because we look at it, we don't know if car 1 or car 3's destructor is executing first. We just know we have two destructors execute here. So the way to do this is to define a static int, and I'm going to call it count, and then we have to uh, define some space for it in the compilation unit. This is kind of a headache if you're used to um, other languages like Java and C Sharp, you don't have to do this, but just because of the way that C++ uh, is defined, we have to do this. I don't have to say static again. I'm just saying car has a count variable, it's static. And if you've done all the static exercises, this is old hat to you. So I have this count, and then in the constructor, oh, I also, let's define an ID, int ID. Now down here, I'm going to uh, uh, put put these on new lines here, and we're going I keep the opening curly on the top line just to just to save some screen real estate. Okay, so so here in the constructor, I want to say ID gets count plus plus. So notice that ID is an instance variable and count is a static variable. So basically, every time that we create a new instance of car, we're going to increment count, meaning there's a new instance. But then we're also going to assign the previous value of count to ID. So each car will have a unique ID. And then here in the uh, constructor, I'm going to put the ID here. Well, yeah, we can just do it there, even though we're not passing it really as a argument to cars constructor but we'll just put it there and then um and here just for consistency we'll also print the ID so then you can clearly see which car is being created and which one's being destroyed and thus making our output much more explicit so let's let's rerun this again remember here main we have car one and then we define a new scope 
we have car 2, and then this scope completes, and we have car 3. So I'm actually going to change count to count's value to 1, just so that the 1 lines up with this 1. Otherwise, we'd be 0 base, because it's post-increment. I could make this pre-increment, but whatever. Pick your poison. So here we go. Let's, let's execute this. Okay, so now our output is much more explicit. So let's go here. And we see that car 1's constructor executes, because car 1's first. And car 2 is in here. But since this scope completes, again, car 2 disappears. And then we have car 3's constructor. Now notice the order of the output of the destructors. Uh, the runtime stack winds in, and then it winds out. So it, it, it unwinds in the opposite order that it winds in. So since car 3 was the last one declared, uh, it's the first one to go out. So it's a LIFO kind of structure, la last in, first out. And then, after car 3 has finished terminating, then car 1's destructor executes. So that's, that's, that's stack and winding in a nutshell. And um, also a little bit of uh, some static variable tricks to, in order to be able to track the number of instances you have of a certain type.